a low Belarusian focus on uh, press club of Belarus continues. It's a um, weekly press conference dedicated to the conference situation in Belarus. Today's topic is the activity of the courtyards in Belarus and self-organization of people. And I'll start with uh, introducing our speakers. It's Andrei Gorok, member of the main composition of the Coordinating Council, political scientist and director of the Center for European Transformation, LONJ. Hello. Next, Tatiana Vodolashska, sociologist and coordinator of the Flying University. Hello, Tatiana. Hello. And Vitaly Rimashevsky, co chairman of the BCD party, a member of the main composition of the Coordinating Council. Hello. Good afternoon. I would like all our guests all journalists, all the people who are planning to ask questions at this press conference, to rename in the format a name, surname, and the media outlet, like I have, for example. Please use this example. So it'll be easier for us to uh, address the questions of the speakers. You're welcome to answer, ask you the questions in the chat. Also, you can raise your hand and the chat will give you the floor to ask your question in person. I would like to remind you that we have a, a simultaneous interpretation in English. And if it's better for you to listen to the English language interpretation, please do that, choosing the relevant channel. We'll start traditionally with the uh, introductory remarks by our speakers. I would like to give floor to Mr. Andrei Igorov, please. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. I would like to say a few introductory words about the context where we are now and the movement uh, of the Belarusian courtyards. The Belarusian revolution, which started at the beginning of the election of, uh, on the 9th of August, has grown or into a massive movement, which has engulfed almost all groups of the Belarusian population. We cannot name a social group which uh, is not this or that way in, involved in the protest movement. One of the phenomena of the Belarusian authoritarian system is this situation where the, the state is the main factor, main agent in any sphere, be it education, healthcare, work relations. Also, the self government and uh, local communities. Up to now, we haven't seen any local governance and the possibility of the citizens to solve the problems and issues where they live. It has been uh, gradually destroyed since the first years of Lukashenko's rule. And the state in Belarus has become the main player which regulates the communication and the relations in every sphere. One of the particular elements of the Belarusian revolution is that the, the people are starting the process of uh, returning the public control over these spheres to get back the normative function of uh, solving the issues in this sphere and becoming another a real subject, a real uh, active actor. It's like, for example, parents want to influence the quality of education and trade unions in the uh, working facilities show the signs of people living there. State initiatives. I want to reinstate independent trade union organizations. 
which are aimed at uh, doing what they are supposed to do, mainly protecting the rights of the workers. The same is happening at the local level in the courtyards, where people are using their organ self-organization activity, trying to regain their control of their public life. The governing of uh, basically where they live. And this courtyard movement is one of the elements of uh, reinstating the true self governance in Belarus. We can say that the grassroots level of the self governance is regaining its pace there. Well, I think. Uh, my colleague will, some of my colleagues will touch upon that in more detail, or we can answer your questions if you have some about this matter. Thank you, Andrea. I would like to remind you that uh, you're free to ask your questions in the group chat of the Zoom. Also, uh, there you can ask your questions. Tatiana Dolaska, now the floor is yours. I will continue this topic. As Andre already said, this courtyard activity became a very important part of daily life of people. Very often it's perceived as uh, uh, something astonishing, something new, but uh, I would like to uh, mention a few preconditions uh, of this activity to understand better its nature. I will start with the important period called uh, uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, which uh, meant that uh, the authorities lost the trust of the population because of their activities in Bitter. At the same time, the horizontal connections started developing. They were not yet at the courtyard level, but the Belarusian society started trusting into some other groups of population, not the state. And we saw that we can only not, not only trust each other, but also during our efforts, we can solve this or that issue. It's important here to notice, uh, to consider the big companies, campaigns like Buy Help, but also we see the local communities and businesses offer their services. We saw each other for the first time and started co cooperating horizontally. Next point is the election campaign, which was to this or that extent concentrating on some points, local points, where we saw new activists arising. The key points here was that on the 9th of August, people started gathering uh, outside schools and the protest activity was localized at the district levels. From here, we can start, we can talk about the develop, creation of these con connections where people join the protest activities and uh, not through, let's say, political headquarters of the election candidates, but also through the local groups. Moreover, other forms of cooperation like professional, communities and uh, parent communities, they're under the press and the, the pressure of ideology and politics, state politics. In that sense, the, the assembly points in the courtyards became more open to people. Now it's one of the key places for self-organization of uh, the civil society. Not in the sense that uh, it is a place for where they try to solve the issues of their district, but uh, it is a place where they try to solve the political issues of the country. As I said, there constantly arise new tasks in front of such communities. So when we talk where this could result in, it's important to understand that for them it is very important for this to become a institution, there need to be some new challenges and internal development uh, 
for them as a community. Thus, they must become not only the platform uh, platforms for self-mobilization, but also the platforms for civil dialogue on different issues and the creation and the formation of the community. On our behalf, the Flying University started offering two months ago to those courtyard communities uh, uh, lectures on various topics to form for them a joint uh, foundations, discuss certain various issues, wide range of issues. Uh, like people recognize they have similar interest when they see the books they read are the same and can refer to some situations, thoughts and words. The same is happening in the development of the courtyard communities so that they would not have situational reaction and some working plans and strategies, which is also important. I think uh, my colleague Vitaly will touch upon this, but also some cultural base, cultural basis. Only then they can grow into sustainable communities which may become the basis for cell governments, ethical and here. Thank you, Tatiana. I'll give floor now to be Mr. Vitaly Ermashevsky, who will tell us about the legal ways of uh, for people to unite. Good afternoon, once again. Thank you very much for the attention to the topic, and thank you for inviting me to take part in this conference. I'll say a few words about the approaches of the Kermitian Council. We believe that what is happening in our country now not only connecting with the protest activity against Lukashenko. I agree with, uh, with what my colleagues said here today. In fact, this is a new mentality of Belarusians, which unavoidably will grow into new forms of civil society and more active participation of citizens in the political process and process of self-government. The government and council understand this very well. And one of our major strategic tasks, we see the establishing of communication with these local communities and the systems so that we could propose to people new ways, new sustainable ways of self governance and self management. One of the projects of the current council is an online trade union through which more than 1500 applications have been sent to create the primary organizations in the uh, various organizations and universities. We have analyzed the Belarusian legislation, and I would like to remind you that the novelty of this political campaign was that the political forces that conducted it used all the legal ways of operations. Now we see the desire of the uh, local communities, courtyards, to get assistance for localization and for uh, education, because currently those thugs in masks spread them out, disperse them on the basis that their activity is illegal, having analyzed the legislation. We came to the conclusion that in Belarus there is a legal form of self-governance. It's called the Collegial Bodies of Territorial Public Self-Governance, or KATOS in Russian. They're based on local communities. Their advantage is that at any time the people are in the, in the position to uh, reform them. Now we're working with the local initiative. We're telling them about this possibility and we're at the stage when the new communications with the already existing bodies of cell government bodies are established where there are some loyal people those uh, things were bodies were created illegally because according to law to create this body you need to have direct or through proxy the participation of at least 20 
Currently, if we talk about Minsk, all the Kotosas or the territorial commissions position. The activity, the civil activity is so high now that we see that people чтобы было проведено местное собрание и законодательство там it doesn't matter where you live, be it Minsk or rural area, you can unite with your team. And launch the process of re-electing uh, your self-government body. The powers are quite um, wide. They can uh, help uh, conduct elections. They can organize the um, musical concert, many things that people are doing now, but um, been punished or repressed by the state. For. Now we offer all the willing people willing to do this to meet um, and uh, We use the initiatives and we're really working with uh, courtyard activities and activists. We hope that the Flying University will join us here and the Yaflapega Foundation as well. Several deputies of the city council have supported us. They're ready to support us. We also plan that this will be a trial stage, which will involve at least 100, 200 regional groups. Hopefully, it will end within a month after the new year will launch a campaign of the local election to the collegial bodies of the territorial self-government. This initiative this initiative is bound for success because our aim is to uh, support the regional activists and leaders who are leaders already in their courtyards. We will organize several activities which help them to get a wider legitimacy in the eyes of the courtyard communities and local communities. In parallel, we're planning to launch our strength and education program. And we hope that we'll see the collegial bodies titular of, of titular self, uh, public self-government will be re-elected soon. Working on the independent trade unions, people will get additional level of protection. Also, having analyzed the uh, demands of people. We see that uh, our demands of the current council, like the freeing of the early political prisoners and so on and so forth, are shared by the people um, in those local communities and uh, actually discussed there on the spot. There is a feedback form on the website. Every person can fill it in. It doesn't matter where you live in rural or in the urban. In a, 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 we'll help you. We'll help you, self government body, to get re-elected. Such processes have been launched in Minsk. And in rural area, we'll see people contacting us about this. We see that the, this campaign 
will be success. We have some technical difficulties. Unfortunately, Vitaly, we cannot hear you. We have lost contact with you. We found him, but uh, he's ups and down. Okay. Well, basically, I've covered everything, all the points that I wanted to relate to, but I can uh, talk about this all day long, but uh, hopefully you will understand our strategy. And we hope that uh, this is our approach in a nutshell. We put in front of us both long-term and short-term goals. Thank you, Vitaly. I would like to remind our guests that uh, you are welcome to ask your questions in the Zoom chat and uh, raise your hand. So. Uh, you can ask a question in person. We have several questions already. First question is how to help protesters to understand the scale of the courtyard protest, of which we have quite a few. I'm addressing this question to all the speakers who feel that they can answer it. I think the protesters understand very well the scale of the courtyard movement, but in order to get encouraged, I would recommend that they from time to time go to the web chat and local chat and to understand how many flags are appearing and to click on different regions. And I suggest that they visit other web chats of other courtyards to see what the situation is there. Not only online, but also offline, to establish contacts with the other courtyards. But we, because we see now some connections being established between different uh, self-government communities and different districts. Still, you have to understand that both the courtyard movements and the trade unions and the factories and the strike committees at universities have the same structure. Where there are tens of activists, there are hundreds of people who join different actions. And there are thousands of people who listen to what the activist says, but don't participate actively. So we talk when we talk about the implementation of collective action in the frame of the whole com local community. For example, when we want all the mm, citizens living in one quad do something, we see the activities of the self-government bodies are not strong enough yet in order to hold a joint action. It means that they need to move the structure further informationally to uh, need to have a wider coverage to achieve a, a new to cover more and more people with their materials and their information. Thank you. Tatiana Vitali, would you like to add something to what Andrei said? I think enough has been said. It's obvious for all the activists that if we read the independent media, let alone telegram channels, we'll see that more than 50% of protest activity has to do with the courtyard activists, courtyard movement, which testifies to the fact that there is a very big potential for them. I will add that I agree to what Andrei said. 
in the sense that the issue of development and structural and systemic development of those communities is connected with the necessity to show how many of people there there is and there are the symbolic space remains important meaning all that is connected with the stickons stickers with the various inscriptions on the walls while it's uh, quite difficult for us to cover the wider physical space there is a sense of occupying the ideological uh, sense in response to various bans and various legal drafts on white red white flags it would be important for example to put as many white white red white flags in the windows as possible but we shouldn't focus on this on the main lever lever there should be more developed and more deep programs we have a question in the chat now Vitaly Maros is asking from Ukraine asking a question about the uh, uh, relative safety and security of the, the local chats what do you think the hacking of these chats has to do being the some technical difficulties they may have some vulnerabilities or some social vulnerabilities i think we should turn to experts about this first of course uh, when the administrators of, of those chats are detained the police get access to those chats but they're very much worried about the access to people's smartphones or receiving passwords when they're trying to get access to people's smartphones they uh, resort to uh, such things as the torch haven and they have quite a few possibilities to get access to those passwords and access and uh, they can threaten people with the physical violence also thank you The next question why the, the active uh, local communities in the in courtyards in minsk alone you know i can answer this question in fact the local communities can be seen and be observed not only in minsk we have created this support service already in August in the next in the first several weeks we received uh, tens of dozens of calls from Zhabinko Bukhov or a small ones where people were ready to create regional coordination council or city of Zaslav for example the activity there and the initiative is also there but uh, resources in people in this have more resources almost two people live here it's easier to for people to get protected because the level of uh, fear is much more bigger there and resources that the local authorities possess is much bigger there we need to understand in the first month of Belarusian revolution just like andres igor have said first month the people had a feeling that the changes can come quickly and we can get the new authorities tomorrow so this activity was limited to the street actions without using the formal legal procedures to become a fully fledged movement and the people are being punished for that uh, be it activists or leaders because the, they all went spent time in jail they have been threatened in their workplace in the residence place of residence which shows that uh, visually this activity remained in minsk and the value for people is very high we can see that uh, how difficult it was for 
people for Roman Bandarenka to protect his murals from this local activity, to protect uh, the, the self-expression opportunities, to get protected uh, from the police they did that. What does it mean there's no desire for the people in the region to do that? We are offering this Katos initiative. We're still saying about the trade union, not about the strike committees, because all these things are aimed at the long-term resistance and the uh, fight for Belarus in the long-term regime, because we know that this will last at least several months, and we have them people giving them a new opportunities to use all the legal opportunities to to retain this new mentality This is one of the forms uh, through this katos. And trade unions is another. We are already helping the pensioners' movement and the women's movement. It has been mentioned that the parents of the secondary school students who are falling under repressions get together, unite, and need our support. We understand it very well, and this is a technical task for us. Thank you, Andrei, Tatiana, please. I agree that the activity is. Uh, can be seen not only in Minsk, but uh, Minsk prevails. However, the regions are also quite active, but I uh, link that uh, uh, there are many more active people in Minsk because the social base of this revolution is constrained in Minsk. If you look at the courtyards in Minsk, from all the urban uh, dwellings in the Kamenna Gorka district, and the old districts, they uh, were the most active ones, more active than the uh, five-story building, where we thought that uh, the people are more connected. It has to do with the people forming the base of the revolutionary movement, which is based on the people who connect their lifestyle with the changes. And this is what happens more from more. Therefore, they Concentrate, I concentrate in Even though in the regions we see some court inactivity and it shouldn't be put in the sidelines, uh, we probably should pay more attention to it. Thank you. Andrei, you wanted to add something? There are quite a few factors that explain the activity in Minsk, but there are some objective factors. Well, very important. 24% of uh, residents of Belarus live in Minsk. And in Minsk, in those quarters, uh, tens of thousands of people we may live. Many more than in small towns. And uh, where in the regions, people live in one or two story buildings. And this physical fact explains and shows the objective reasons for Minsk uh, courtyard movement being more active. Thank you. Question from Alexander Kornyshev with Vitebsk Courier media outlet. How, why cannot uh, the authorities simply ban those self-organizing bodies and uh, prosecute people who want to 
launch them? Well, the authorities can simply ban anything now, any protest activity. But as to the As to the registration, the major task is to re-elect those self-governing bodies. Can you hear me now? Problems with connection. Can you repeat the point? Yes, first and foremost, the authorities are repressing people now on any occasion. The authorities are trying to repress the active people in the name of the law. For example, people do not observe the law of mass events. Our initiative is introducing the uh, court directive into, into the legal field. So when the preparation of the local governance is being held, the, the leaders get the opportunity to legally communicate with the target audience and they get more legitimacy at the stage of the formation of these meetings because we see, have the mechanism where people sign for the, their own representative and this way each house has their own legal leader which will receive more legitimacy from the people and will strengthen their team for people with whom we work, it is very clear why they need it. Conduct repressions. Now, uh, the authorities say that they are observing the law. And this issue will not be an issue anymore after we launch this process. If the authorities deny the registration to the cell government bodies, for self-government bodies, they get together at the special meetings where they can not only discuss the issue of the uh, reorganizing these bodies, but also discuss various issues and laws. And many other things can be discussed in this process. This is the process that gives it people are more protection and helps activists and leaders to become more legitimate get more support and thirdly will help uh, involve new people so if the authorities say that we are abandoning your local meetings for this or that reason the teams remain and they move to the next stage and take a new shape for us, it's the legality, it's the peaceful nature of the process. And the main achievement of this campaign, and uh, uh, it's the Babarika's um, headquarters merit. They brought to the society this support because the people who go to the protest uh, constitute about 10% of the protest potential of the people who are ready to support the changes in, in the country, including the changes at the lower level. Uh, our initiative is not the initiative coming from top to bottom. It is a grassroots activity. We ask the activists what they need for help. Any assistance in legalization uh, is what they told us. And we analyzed various forms of uh, what we can offer as the various forms of self-governance. This is an optimal and the best uh, option we have in the country right now. Thank you. I would like to add, Andrei, please. I'm quite skeptical about it. A legal mechanism as a, as a panacea as the answer for everything. Although I share the view that this legal mechanism 
should be used. However, I still am still skeptical of such issues because the authorities can simply repress people. But we need to think how we need to organize the factual work, the active actual work, how to organize people so that people, uh, so that the state will not simply be able to ignore them and not register that. I have a simple thought, if you have 20,000, 20% of the people who are organized in the local territory, in the local work, uh, working place, and they constitute about 20% of the population, you cannot do anything without this. Whatever they do, if it's one fifth of the people, the state will uh, find a way or try to find a way to legalize them in order to control them somehow. Thank you. Tatiana, I would like to add something. I would like to add that indeed this uh, resistance to the authorities when they want to ban this registration could manifest itself in the massive nature of all these assemblies. It's clear that the, the people will be subject to those repressions. But if you look at the recent marches in the courtyards, if 100 and 200 or 300 initiatives arise, it's difficult to tackle them. So this movement, including the, the movement of solidarity and the manifestation of this, it's a wide element in support of each other. Resisting repressions. Thank you, Tatiana. I'd like to remind our participants that you still can send us your questions in the Zoom chat. We can also raise your hand and uh, ask the question. Personally, I would like to clarify one thing. Vitaly, you told us that you actually communicate with pensioners who are protesting, have been protesting for a long time in Belarus for more than a week. Also, you organize the trade unions. Can you tell us more about the these associations. The idea of contacting pensioners is a way of legalizing their activity, isn't it? In the coordinating council, we have seen that due, due to repression, some leaders had to leave the country. However, the task is uh, for Coordinating Castle to establish communication with the women's movement and the working with the pensioners who want to create a working group. Just like I mentioned before, and Andrei did, the parent committees in the secondary schools and the universities could be seen as one of the forms of self-organizing for people. What we raised at this conference was the issue of self-organization based on the territorial principle in both in urban and rural areas. In terms of trade unions, it's a way for people to protect each other and to promote their interest at the working space. There are also professional associations and some articulated interest of groups of population, like pensioners, like parent committees, like women who are trying to protect the children from the destructive influence of the state propaganda. We see the support and the communication with them as a strategic goal for us, because as Tatiana has rightly noticed, basically the structural changes are taking place in the country 
And I think this is the most important achievement of Belarus in 2020. Not, not that people tested a mass and uh, shown their voice against Lukashenko, against the regime, but uh, there is willingness for people, of people to assume responsibility. It is a paradigm shift. This uh, gives us the hope that we can build the new Belarus. Without this mental shift, we can only observe the, the change of dictatorial regimes. And with this change of mentality, we need to find a new society and a new civil society in particular. This is the major achievement. And we need to cherish this resource because this is the basis for the European democratic future of our country. Indeed, the, the, we have many female groups. The Coordinating Council and the people, experienced people from political parties have experience and some really educational pro programs, which are liked by the people who are ready to change Belarus for the better today. We can help with additional level of protection and articulation of these issues at the international level. The Coordinating Council is occupied with that. The main members, uh, key members of, uh, of the protest movement include, involve such people. Every week we see representatives of the civil society joining us and also representatives of the protest in, in initiatives joining us, including the uh, strike committees. Thank you, Vitaly. So, I would like to ask a question. The election of deputies in the local councils in Belarus are to be held not later than 18th of January 2022. As I understood, those self-governing bodies and local government bodies are the pre preparation of this, for these elections. Is that so? You know, in fact, this is not exactly the case. We not say that this is our goal because the local level of self-government is valuable as such. The self-government, the local council deputies is another level, another category. It's a place where the elected and the local government bodies involves direct self-government, therefore it's valuable. Some of the activists of the see themselves in the future as the MPs and the House of Representatives and uh, therefore we believe this could be a possible broader development for these activists. In case they get involved in this political process, the level of our deputies at all levels, be the local council and the House of Representatives will be much better. And we will present the interests of people much better than we see now. So in the future, long term future, yes, people who have this ambition want to get there. Uh, can uh, get this self-promotions in the sense if they are active and they get more people recognizing their achievements, they should aim for it. Hopefully these people will remain in politics and 
become the deputies of local councils, although this is not our main goal. Tatiana, please. We need to understand there are two poor things like the formal legal mechanism, like the local councils and local government bodies. And there's also public process and public uh, conscience. So we have seen recently the mechanism, many mechanisms being distributed and the public process simply frozen meaning that people did not use the local governments because they were not allowed to do this. They did not see any sense in this. And what we see now, whatever proposals are made be in the local communities or local government bodies, all this works towards people trying to get the responsibility for their lives in their own hands. Whatever forms it, it is manifested in the future will be seen quite soon. It is clear that the, the short-term political calendar involves the local elections and through the the self-government bodies should understand that our legislation on self-government is limited and it, it mean they need to consider the government's agenda. So it all works towards the public activity and rightly so. The political forms will be formed There is no self-identity of the people being active citizens. Whatever we are offered in a referendum on elections, it will not, not be noticed. I think we're out of, out of questions. So thank you very much to all the speakers. Thank you for joining us today. I wish you success.